the forgotten ancestor of bears and dogs. Have you ever stared at your dog and wondered if it secretly dreamed of being a bear? What if I told you that long ago, a creature really did exist that looked like a wild mix of a dog and a bear? Its name was Amphisian, often nicknamed the bear dog, and it roamed the earth millions of years before modern bears and wolves ever took a stroll. Picture a wolf's long snout and wagging tail on a massive body with bear-like legs. That's Amphisian. Is it a weird new dog breed or a mutated bear? In truth, it was neither. Amphisian belonged to a special group of ancient carnivores. Today, we'll unravel the mystery of Amphisian in an exciting, question-filled journey, and maybe even imagine what would happen if bear dogs were still around. Who was Amphisian? Amphisian was an extinct relative of both bears and dogs, but not a direct ancestor of either. It lived roughly 42 to 2.6 million years ago during the Eocene to Miocene epoch. In scientific terms, it belonged to its own family, Amphisianidae, part of the dog-like carnivores, Caniformia. Fossils show it spread across North America, Europe, Asia, and Africa for about 40 million years. Scientists often call these ancient animals bear dogs because they had features of both bears and dogs. In fact, Amphisian literally means ambiguous dog, a name given because early researchers couldn't quite decide if it was more bear or dog-like. But modern experts know Amphisian and its kin were their own unique family of meat-eaters. Despite its dog nickname, Amphisian was not your fluffy chihuahua's grandpa. It was something new and wild. Paleontologists have even found the Florida Museum of Natural History's collection includes hundreds of amphisian bones, showing it was once the top predator in places like Miocene, Florida. What did amphisian look like? Scientists have pieced together amphisian skeletons from fossils, and the result is astonishing. The skeleton above is of amphisian ingens, one of the largest bear dogs ever found. Notice the big skull with strong jaws, long, wolf-like muzzle, and sharp canines. The body is huge, built on sturdy, plantigrade legs, walking flat-footed like a bear, not on tiptoe like a wolf. In life, an amphisian might stand over 5 feet tall at the shoulder, taller than most people, and up to 8.2 feet long. Imagine a dog almost as long as a small car with the heft of a large bear. Bear dogs weren't all built the same. Some of them leaned toward a wolf-like design with long legs and lighter bodies that were perfect for running. Take the genus Barosian, for example. These animals had lanky limbs and sharp slicing teeth, making them resemble something like a greyhound crossed with a wolf. Fast, lean, and clearly designed to chase down prey across open ground. Others, however, went in the opposite direction and grew into heavy, bear-like powerhouses. One of the best examples is Amphisian longaramus, often nicknamed White's Bear Dog. Unlike the runners, this species had a wider, bulkier body and a set of jaws built for crushing rather than slicing. The Florida Museum describes A. longaramus as having more bear-like qualities such as a broader body and crushing molars. And in terms of ecological role, the closest modern equivalent would be the grizzly bear. In short, while some bear dogs sprinted like wolves, others lumbered like grizzlies, showing just how diverse and adaptable this family of predators once was. In fact, one species, Amphisium ingens, reached polar bear size or more. Some estimates put the biggest bear dogs at 600 to 700 kilograms. That's heavier than any modern wolf or bear. Other smaller bear dogs were just a few tens of kilograms, about the size of a big dog or wolf. These differences show bear dogs evolved into many niches. In summary, if you saw an amphisian chasing its dinner, you might do a double take. It would have a bear's bulk and a dog's face. No wonder people called it a dog bear or bear dog. When and where did they roam? Amphisionids had a long run on Earth. They first appeared around 42 to 45 million years ago and survived until only about 5 to 10 million years ago. 
That's roughly as long as all of human evolution so far. Their heyday was during the warm Miocene epoch. In those days, Earth's climate was generally warmer and wetter than today. Forests and jungly woodlands stretched across continents, so bear dogs could hide in cover before ambushing prey. Where in the world? Early on, the first bear dogs lived in North America. By the late Eocene and early Miocene, they had spread into Europe, Asia, and even Africa. Fossils of amphibian and its relatives turn up from Nebraska to Maryland in the US, from France to China, and across Africa. For example, Amphician longaramus is well known from Florida riverbeds. Over time, the climate changed. After the warm Eocene and Miocene, the planet gradually cooled and dried. By the late Miocene, about 5 million years ago, grasslands expanded and forests shrank. These new open plains were great for running wolves and other fast hunters, but not so friendly for heavy ambush predators. By about 5 to 10 million years ago, bear dogs were mostly gone. The last fossils appear in the end of the Miocene in Africa. Dogs, bears, and the bear dog family tree. How does amphibian fit into the family tree of animals? Imagine the tree of dog-like and bear-like carnivores. At the base are early ancestors, then branches for bears, for dogs, and for others. Amphicionids sit on a branch that split off before the modern dog family, Canidae, and bear family, Ursidae, separated. In other words, they are cousins of both dogs and bears. As one source puts it, amphicionids are closely related to true dogs, Canidae, and a little less related to bears, Ursidae. They're like the long-lost great-uncles of your Labrador and your teddy bear. Once upon a time, 19th century scientists even tried to classify bear dogs as either dogs or bears. But today, researchers agree Amphicinidae is its own family. DNA, of course, is long gone, so scientists rely on bones. They look at skull and ear structures, teeth shapes, and more. These show that while Amphicinids share traits with both groups, they don't neatly fit in either. In fact, detailed studies suggest Amphicinids might be some of the earliest dog-like carnivores, a branch older than the split of true dogs and bears. That's why they're sometimes called basal caniforms. Because of this history, amphicionids had a mix of traits. They walked plantigrade, like bears, or digitigrade, toe-walking like wolves, depending on species. This mix sometimes confuses artists, but the takeaway is amphicion was not a true dog and not a true bear. It was its own unique thing in between. A day in the life of a bear dog. When it came to hunting, bear dogs showed two very different approaches, depending on the species. Some were built like giant wolves. Slender-legged amphicionids, such as Parisian, likely chased down prey across open ground, much like modern wolves do today. Others, however, were heavier and bulkier, closer in form and strategy to bears. These larger species probably relied on stealth and ambush creeping through woodland before launching themselves at their victims. Their powerful forelimbs and immense weight would have allowed them to pin down prey, finishing the hunt with crushing bites to the neck or belly. One particularly fascinating fossil discovered in Portugal revealed the jaw of an ancient rhino with deep puncture marks. The spacing and size of those marks matched perfectly with the teeth of Amphician giganteus suggesting these predators were not shy about taking on massive animals, whether by hunting them directly or scavenging their carcasses. Their teeth, too, told the story of efficient carnivores. Bear dogs come equipped with long, stabbing canines at the front and specialized carnassial molars in the back, designed to shear flesh with the precision of scissors. This combination marked them as mesocarnivores, meaning their diet was mostly meat or hypercarnivores relying almost entirely on flesh. Behaviorally, they likely live somewhere between the world of bears and big cats. Fossilized dens discovered in Nebraska show that large bear dogs dug burrows, possibly to protect their young. As for their social lives, it's still a mystery. Perhaps mothers lived with their offspring while adult males wandered alone, crossing territories in search of mates or food. If their behavior mirrored modern predators, they might have used grunts, growls, or even deep bellows to communicate, 
sounds powerful enough to echo across prehistoric landscapes. In the end, Amphissian seems to have been a fascinating mix of instincts – curious and cunning like a dog, yet powerful and dangerous like a bear, a creature that blurred the lines between two worlds, embodying the strengths of both. Why did they vanish? It's a sad story. Amphissianids were common for millions of years, but by around 7 to 5 million years ago, they fade from the fossil record. Scientists think it was a combination of climate change and competition. During the late Miocene, the world was changing fast. Habitats shifted from lush forests to open savannas and grasslands. Ambush predators like Amphissian struggled in wide open spaces without dense cover. Meanwhile, new rivals were on the rise. Smaller, smarter relatives, the true dogs, became excellent endurance hunters on plains. At the same time, bears learned to eat all kinds of food and could survive where big meat-eaters starved. And let's not forget other big predators. Saber-toothed cats and hyenas were also chasing the same dinners. The prehistoric blog author Dino May suggests Amphissian was caught in a perfect storm – drying climate, less forest hiding spots, and the rise of faster, more adaptable hunters. In short, by about 5 million years ago, Amphissian didn't have a place in the new world. Their big bodies needed a lot of food, and the ecosystem just wasn't on board with that anymore. The last bear dogs vanished, leaving wolves and bears to rule the mammals that remain. What if they never went extinct? Let's do a little time travel imagining. Picture this. You're walking through a forest in the year 2025, enjoying the quiet, when suddenly you come face to face with a bear dog. The sight alone would leave you speechless. Most amphissian were enormous, and if one of the largest species, like A. engines, were still alive, it would tower over your car door, looking like some bizarre mix between a gigantic bear and a dog's face. Even the smaller species wouldn't exactly be small. They'd still be the size of a Great Dane on steroids. But what about its behavior with humans? Would a bear dog act like a loyal dog wagging its tail and waiting for treats? Or would it be more like a grizzly, untamed and wild? Chances are, it would fall on the wild side. These were predators, after all. Still, part of me wonders, just as wolves eventually became dogs with patience and time, could a bear dog have been tamed if humans had tried? It's a fun thought, though not one I'd recommend testing in real life. Just imagine a group of hikers spotting one at dusk. Everyone would freeze, hearts pounding as the legend of a half-bear, half-dog spread from village to village. In the wild, though, the bear dog would reclaim its throne as a top predator. Imagine them roaming the deep forests of Siberia or the dense jungles of the Amazon, keeping deer, wild boar, and even larger animals in check. They might even compete with polar bears for territory in the north or clash with jaguars in South America. The thought alone sparks the imagination. Nature documentaries, survival stories, Maybe even a tongue-in-cheek reality show titled, I'm a bear dog, get me out of here. Of course, all of this is pure speculation. The truth is, bear dogs are long gone, and no evidence suggests they'll ever return. With Amphissian out of the picture, wolves and bears inherited their ecological roles, shaping the predator-prey balance we know today. If bear dogs had survived, who knows? Maybe lions and tigers would have been pushed aside forced into extinction to make room for these towering half-bear, half-dog beasts.